Good morning, Trinity and Zion. Good to be here with you. We're actually taking a field trip. We're still here at Trinity Lutheran Church here in Manila, uh, but we're actually in the basement. And I wanted to show you around a little bit. Uh, right now at Trinity, uh, we have an incredible basement, but we've been trying to find ways to use it, to get it activated. Um, and we're in one of the first rooms that we've just completed. Essentially, we just did some painting and added a little furniture. But we've created a room, and the final step is to get Wi-Fi in it. But we've created a space for our college kids and our high schoolers um, because many of them are working online. In fact, I know some college kids who uh, came back from college because all their classes are online. So we saw a need um, in our community uh, among different age groups that could use a space to study. Because sometimes it's really hard to study at home. Um, because there's just so many distractions. So uh, we didn't put a TV in here or anything, but we tried to create a little space um, where our kiddos can come and, and do their homework. So really quick, I just wanted to give you a, a quick little tour. So we're gonna go this way. Uh, and then over here, we've got a little printer. So if anybody needs to print anything off, they can do that. So we're slowly trying to get Trinity's basement back into commission. So thanks for going on a field trip with me. And that all said, we're continuing to look at the Beatitudes, or Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, from Matthew 5. And today's verse is, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Again, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Again, I know I've been uh, hitting this over and over again, but this word blessed, we can interchange with this word saved. So uh, saved are the pure in heart. And what we see over and over again is that everything be begins with Jesus and in his interaction with us. Everything begins with the Holy Spirit and his interaction with us. Everything begins with the Father and his interaction with us. And because of those interactions with the Holy Trinity, we are changed people. And not only are we blessed, not only are we saved, but then that leads to... Uh, change in our lives and how we how we live um, and 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 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God and the reality is we have God because of the Trinity's interaction with us but now this Trinity this holy God is interacting with our um, hearts in such a way that it's changing us changing us for the better now really quick blessed are the pure in heart what, what does that even mean uh, most Bible scholars and thinkers agree that when it's talking about the pure in heart, it's talking about uh, uh, this relationship between humans and idols. Humans and idols. And those who are pure in heart are saying no to idols, are running in the opposite direction of idols. Now what's an idol? An idol is anything. It can be a person, a place, or a thing that you go to in order to feel full, whole, and in control. An idol is a person, place, or thing uh, that makes you feel whole and full and in control of your life. And the reality is idols are everything and anything but the one true God who has revealed himself both in history and the Holy Scriptures. And when you look at the Bible over and over again, um, people are going to idols, things less than, to, less than God to feel good. Uh, and the reality is when you look at our culture, when you look at our lives, we're doing that all the time. And you can uh, figure out what your idols are based on how you react to things in life. Anger, what causes, makes you angry? Um, obviously there's things that we need to be angry about, but very often anger reveals what our idols are, the things we're going to to feel full, whole, and in control of our lives. So for instance, you get home and all you want to do is sit on the couch, watch TV, but what happens, the kids show up, the missus says, hey, uh, can you take out the garbage? Um, or there's just some sort of chore that you've got to do and what do you do? You get angry, you go, oh, why? You know, and, and so the question is, why are you so angry? I mean, it's just taking out the garbage, it's just playing with your kids, you love them. Why are you getting angry? Well, the reality is there's a good chance that uh, we've taken something like comfort, feeling good, feeling nice. Uh, we've taken that and we've elevated it in our lives to the point where it's our God, where we will do anything to make sure that we have comfort. 
Um, so when anything interrupts that, interrupts our worship, as it were, of that idol, we get angry. So anger can reveal idols in our lives. Anxiety can reveal idols, things that we're trusting into way too much uh, in our lives. And the reality is uh, idols are always trouble because idols are uh, things that um, put I, me, I, uh, in the driver's seat of where God should be. And always the result of idols is it makes you dull. So idols put I in control and they always make you dull. They always ruin your life. Um, an example in the Bible, uh, Jacob. So Isaac has, or excuse me, Abraham has Isaac and then Isaac has Jacob and Esau. Jacob goes off, he finds um, uh, a, a woman, he falls head over heels with, in love with her. But the reality is he's probably driven more by this desire to have love, this desire to have sexual relationship. And because of that, because he's made that the center of his life, because he has made that an idol, he makes really dumb decisions. He's terrible at bargaining. He uh, uh, is just inconsolable. And so the reality is when we are stuck in idols, which can be revealed by our anger or anxiety, we get stuck with idols. It always is a problem because I am in control and it's going to make me dull, idols. Um, and, and maybe the last thing to say about idols is if anything with COVID, has, it's revealed some of our idols. Um, one thing that comes to mind, especially personally, is, is control. We worship control in our lives. Uh, you look at your schedules. Um, I take some solace in the fact that I'm a busy working individual and I, I've elevated it to a point where it's unhealthy and I've made it a God. And I think many of us have done that. And when COVID uh, prevented us from meeting, prevented us from working, um, prevented us from doing the normal sort of things, going to football games, going to uh Walmart or stuff, you know, stuff like that, right? Um, because we have lost control, we've experienced some anxiety, we've broken down, and maybe to some degree, COVID has revealed this idol in our lives, control, and uh, it's tackling it. And it's forcing us to say, am I going to continue to cling on to um, uh, control in my life, or am I going to be transformed? Uh, by the renewal of our minds, transformed by the Holy Trinity so that we become pure in heart, which is to say, we stay away from idols. And so, uh, uh, again, we have this incredible promise, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When we turn away from idols and when we are empowered to turn away from idols, that is when we can finally see that we have a God who loves us, who does not make us dull when we trust in him. Uh, when we see this God, we see a God that gave up everything, even his life, in order to take care of us. The things that we turn to, whether they're people, places, or things, they don't give up anything for us, partly because they're things. They have nothing to give us, um, but they always require you to make a sacrifice. Um, but Jesus said, I am the sacrifice. So our idols always expect us to give, but Jesus does the opposite. He says, I give for you. So when our hearts are transformed to identify the idols in our lives, uh, that's when purity of heart sets in, and that's when we begin to see God. And we can see someone who is worthy of our trust and uh, worthy of our praise. That all said, thank you for joining me. Thank you for going on a field trip. Maybe we'll go to the other room that we just finished up the other day next week. But in the meantime, God is going to put people in your ways to serve and love. So get it done, just as you've been served and loved in Jesus. That all said, we're just going to do the Lord's Prayer this morning. So if you want to join along, go ahead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you, and I'll see you guys later.